man old man here we go again and this week we're back with another banger of a video now this week we're gonna pull old wheel hop wheel into the shop and we are gonna replace the rusty floors in this thing uh-huh we're gonna get rid of that rust right there just playing could y'all imagine that would be the third video in a row of doing rusty floor replacement uh we do the we do wheel hop wilma then after it we do the old someday model a then after it for shits and giggles we'll just knock out the bed floor in the old love trailer here <laughs> hey uh there's something we do need right there now uh, see them leaf springs those actually pertain to what we're doing this go around this go around we've got our 59 inter international not international the international here mr mercer and a couple weeks ago we put floors in it and we're not doing a lot to this thing uh, but one thing we are doing is we're addressing suspension we're swapping in our rear end we're c-notching it to do all that we got to build our own leaf spring hangers uh, shackle mounts and yeah so we're not doing much and i gotta say i'm pretty happy with how this rear sits uh it's pretty low now the truck as a whole is a hell no or a no go that's because the front needs to come down like four inches where we get a little hot rod rake to it uh but for now that's a pretty good baseline of where I'd like the back to kind of sit. Now, I was talking to Slick earlier, and I told him I may go an inch lower than that. And he said, I'd set it there, and then if you want to go lower, go lower. But you know what? Mama didn't raise no punt. Let's go an inch lower than that, and then we'll make the front match somehow. It won't It won't even be up for debate. It will have, have to get it where we want it, nice and low. We got to tear everything off the rear. Uh, before we do that, we got to take some measuring. But we're going to tear stuff down. We're gonna build back our own suspension, even though it's leaf spring. I think it'll be better than what International put underneath here. You'll see what I'm talking about. And uh, yeah, we're gonna challenge. Challenge, what a beautiful word. Challenge, a call to take part in a contest or competition, especially a duel. We will challenge ourselves to make the third rear end work with the C10 leaf springs on the International. Challenge accepted. And the next thing I'm doing is uh, doing some measuring where I know kind of our goal here or our, uh, not goal. I got to know what to target, our target. And you got to be careful saying target when my wife's within like 50 foot. I guarantee even if she is in there asleep, if she heard target, I think she'd be right up ready to go. So shh. we're going to slap some ED on it. Like it needs a little blue pill or something, you know, targeted, targeted. We've got to get underneath there and we got to measure what our targeted rear end position is. Do, do the shimmy shake. Shimmy up underneath here. What you want to do is measure from the top of this frame to the top of this rear end. And we ain't got to be dead nuts, but Eagle Eye here says that's six and five eighths. Now, I said we want to go one inch lower, so we're going to subtract an inch from that and go with five and five eighths. Oh, look at that premium grounding option right there. You can tell that's good quality copper by the way it matches the Statue of Liberty. Oh, shit. Oh. Oh. Ow. <laughs> I ain't got a right hip bone anymore. It's gone. I knocked it off clean down to the Gulf of Mexico. Luckily, that sun feels good on my legs, so I'm just going to lay here and feel better. <laughs> Laughter is the best medicine, so had to make myself chuckle. Holy shit, that hurt. As I was coming out from underneath there, I gave literally my best pelvic thrust trying to move. And the corner of that C-channel right there hit my damn hip bone direct. There may be a hole there, I don't know. Because uh, it felt like they touched each other. And yeah. That hurt, man, that hurt. A five and five eighths. Luckily, I didn't forget that magic number. What else do we need to check? I feel like there's something else I was supposed to look at. Now for our seat notch, there's a couple things we wanna look at here. Uh, one, if we drop that down an inch, how much are we gonna have to seat notch that? We probably want at least three inches of clearance with our notch. As long as we can notch this frame, say two inches or an inch and a half, somewhere in there, we'll have full three inches of clearance. Now, if we needed to notch more, we wanted a bigger notch that's something we want to look at while we're underneath here is how much clearance do we have from the top of the frame 
to the bottom of the bed floor. Yeah, there's maybe a quarter inch in between there. We're gonna do a baby notch and we know we can't come up through the top of the frame without cutting our bed floor. We don't wanna cut the bed floor, so we better keep our notch within the damn frame. So, if you are gonna do a bigger notch, a step notch that comes up through the floor, uh, it's probably a good time to go ahead and mark the bottom of your bed floor for some reference areas before you pull the bed floor off here and then put a notch that sticks up, then you gotta figure out where to cut it, if that makes sense. Man, with that information and insight, uh, we're kinda ready to start doing some tear down cleaning out. Now these were some hangers and shackles from a C10 that I cut out at the uh, salvage yard. And I thought we could maybe adapt them to work for our little situation here. No, and that's the same reason I got this old cross member, because it's got some leaf spring hangers right there. Boy, a leaning tower of scrap metal there is about to come over. She's barely hanging on, ain't she? I don't think we're gonna use our C10 parts though. And it looks like we got some of that good green stuff. That's full strength, baby. Looks like uh, Nathan showed up right in time. Just in time to maybe help me huff this thing around because as I suspected, it's all there. Camera turned off, sorry guys. Luckily Nate Dog helped me sit it down right in and kill my back, I already killed my hip. Got the slice and dice ready. Uh, I crawled up underneath here. It looks like we just got our bolt there and up there. I think that's all that all holds the old propane tank in. But we're also gonna ditch the old homemade uh, headache crack here. Get that out the way where we can get the old uh, Pot County lowering kit, AKA our heavy tank out the back. Now that's the top if y'all did not know. Got this thing ready to turn into a smoker. We ain't gonna turn that into anything. Old Puddin' Pop's done state claim to it. Uh-huh, he's got a propane trailer uh, that he said he's gonna add that to. Grind the head off of our little carriage bolt there. Maybe that'll knock some sense into me. Oh! The whole bed's moving, but this ain't moving. We'll get our little motivator and see if we can't change its mind. She's a little loosey-goosey now. This side ain't lifted a damn hair. So this little thing I recently acquired That was my good block of wood too. If we crushed this and we got serious problems. <laughs> what the hell? Told y'all Luby Doobie's good stuff, huh? A little spray on there and she comes right out. That's all she needed. Oh. Let's straighten our antenna the best we can. Now, I know that don't seem like much, but it's crazy how much taking that crap out the back and dropping that antenna kind of knocked the old man off this truck, if you know what I mean. 
Now I know some of y'all like the accessories, okay? But we're going for hot rod inspiration here. Uh, let's see what it's gonna take to get the bed off this thing next. wasn't pretty it was definitely ugly but after cutting some exhaust I found a way to cut all four of them front bolts with the old slicing dice you can see our bolts right there slice the grounding strap uh, we only had two wires hooked up slice them i think it's ready to be picked up off there it's got two ground straps by the way that's two it actually ain't that bad is it perfect boy having that helping hand was nice uh i would have figured out how to get that bed off there by myself if i had to but luckily I didn't have to. And we're about to keep stripping stuff down, but first we want to mark the center of where we want to notch this when the rear end's in here. First she gets a quick little clean up uh, so we can mark it and not be on Oklahoma red dirt. Well, I wish that ice cream truck back there would take that old alarm or siren and uh, stick it somewhere. Yeah, so I'd tell him where to stick his fudge sickle. Uh, I'm going to take my plumb bob, and we're going to find center here. Uh, hey, background noise, or the lack of me being able to control background noise, is one of the main reasons I'm really looking forward to moving to the new place. So I actually just marked on either side of the string. And we'll take our square and uh, draw our line between our two marks. That looks good to my eagle eye. On this side, I repeat the process. So on this side, our line's kind of favoring the front side of this hole here. And on this side over here, it kind of favors the back side. What the French toast. More than likely, if I was a bet man, our rear ends in here are crooked. We did swap this rear end in. 45 and 13 sixteenths. 45 and 13 sixteenths. That's checking them holes off the cab mounts. So those are matching dead nuts money. 88 and a half, 88 and a half. Now that's just a quick rough measuring, but uh, I would say the frame's probably pretty true, which is actually kind of surprising guys. A lot of these old frames aren't as true as you'd think they are. And if you're getting like some things match and other things don't match, you gotta be careful what you're measuring off of. Like I, I guarantee you those cab mounts are pretty pretty dead nuts to each other because all of our measuring's good off of it, but it ain't uncommon to have a cab mount or something like an eighth inch off, and then you're trying to do your measurements off of it, so of course all your measurements are off. Now if you look at this, you can see this bolt right here we had to add to our leaf spring pack that favors the back side. Come to this side over here, and uh, this side favors the front side. Thus, confirming that rear end's in there crooked. So ultimately, we gotta decide where do we wanna notch this thing, because when we put that one in there, we don't want it crooked. I think the best thing to do is split the difference and basically lay our line uh, right down this center where the uh, hole is. 46 and 3 sixteenths, that's our measurement. Mr. Mercer to the main stage because we're fixing to have a strip party. First, we go for a quick strip down of all the obvious parking brake cables, obviously. 
Get the old hip basher out the way. Better get our drive shaft off there. In fact, we should have done this before we jacked it up where uh, that wouldn't want to spin. But luckily, I know the guy who put this in here and those aren't very tight. Yeah, that's gonna come right out to play. It'll make me get my big pry bar. Come on, this big pry bar is worthless. Like that back, it makes a decent hammer. Hi up here, we ain't even got a slip yoke. Uh, yeah, we got more U-bolts. Holy cow, guys. Pulled them U-bolts off. This sucker's all there. I come, oh, gonna get a little workout action or what? You see how on these C10 hangers, uh, you got a tab on this side and of course this side. Well, International, uh, yeah, they basically just got a stud hanging out there. And it's the same thing up there. And I'm not saying that that would ever be an issue for us. I really doubt we'll ever do anything with this truck that that design would be an issue other than I'm just not a fan of it. If you were a fan of it, I think our C10 leaf springs are pretty close to the same length as these. Like, it, it'd probably bolt in. Good Lord, they put enough stickers on this damn thing or what? Oh yeah, I think the C10 one's slightly longer, but nothing that that shackle wouldn't make up. And I'm not sure our bolt sizes are exactly the same. This one may be a hair bigger. I feel like that's the easy way. That's probably how a Mortsky would do it. He'd just take the easy road, you know? Now we ain't gonna have quite enough time to get our rivets off like I'd like, but we're at least gonna saws all these bolts and uh, slide this rear end out from underneath here. Quick little warm up action. Get that blood flowing. Eat, 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 eat. Might have to reach down there and we'll start the lawnmower. Start the lawnmower. Yeah, all that looked crazy, but guess who's warm now? <laughs> we ended with rolling that out of here last night, uh, but now we still got our old hangers to get off here. So that's the plan, El Capitan. Uh, we're gonna, maybe we'll flap attack the head off of that. We'll try to hammer on it. We'll drill it out if we have to, who knows? We're just gonna whip them and not let them whip us. Slap some looby dooby on our little bump stop brackets. We, we're gonna try to unbolt them. Oh, it did it. It didn't like it, but it did it. Y'all see these crazy exhaust hangers? They got a little bushing in them. And uh, yeah, that bracket dropped down to our exhaust. Slice that yesterday, get that old glass pack off there. Get a brake line bracket here. Brake line, we're gonna have to replace that. It's rusty and crusty. I also see we got some top tier wiring going on here. I'll gather these up, cool little clips that kind of slide on the bottom of the rail and hold your wiring. A little snippy snip. And we'll head down under there and see what we gotta do to clean up our parking brake cables and that brake line. Pull that cable out the bracket and this whole thing should slide out. Maybe we can get her unpinned from up there where we ain't got to hear this flop around down here. Whoop! Boop! Yeah, 
There we go. That's good enough for now. We'll get the front quarter whenever we do the front end. Rocking and rolling pretty decent. We are not gonna take off the shock mounts because I'm not sure if we'll be able to reuse them because uh, those are pretty sturdy for a shock mount. But inside this frame rail, there's a little forest. Uh, so we're gonna blow the forest out the frame rail and then we're gonna keep on flap attacking uh, the rest of our uh, 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 spring hangers. Them damned old pesky spring hangers. Now this crap got packed in this frame uh, between this cross member where I left it, that sucker never got moisture in it and rusted out. Dang old wind's blowing today. I'd say we got our money's worth out of that one. I almost took out the back glass. So our front ones here, we got to do a little looking because uh, some of them are part of that cross member. Knocked out the two top ones. They are not part of the cross member, but the bottom ones are. We got a couple options. Honestly, we could flap attack that down and then just weld a head on it basically like a big spot weld probably be fine we could knock those out of there and put a couple bolts in there and just bolt it it'd be fine i think we're just gonna flap attack it down and weld that baby and by flap attack and weld i mean we're gonna find the center of it and drill her out a little bit. That gives us a well, uh, place for the weld to go in, burn into the rivet and the frame rail, uh, making two, now one. Welding today's gonna be tricky. That wind's blowing so hard, it's actually whipping into the shop. Flappered them down. We could have left the kind of, I don't know, just not the prettiest weld on there. So I'd rather smooth it out. It should be plenty oh strong for what it's doing. Now we are ready to do a little C notching. Uh, that was step one. Step two, we want to level this thing at least side to side. Let's see what our magnetic protractor angle locator says, AKA our Johnson. This cross member reads uh, zero degrees. Frame rail says zero and zero. We'll take it. Well, I don't know how we landed on zero here in the land of the crooked concrete, but hey, a win's a win. If we move the pirate body, we can get to the scrap cabinet. Well, scrap cabinet's looking rough. Here's what we're gonna use to do a little baby notch, little pipe notch. Actually, this ain't the stuff I usually use, is it? Four and a half. Now, this is what I usually use for um, airbag cups. This is what I usually do the pipe notches out of. And yeah, she offers a little more clearance. This piece is left over from doing a notch, I'm guessing. And uh, it matches this here. After a little eagle eyeing, if we go to right there, it looks like we can go right up to the bottom of this hole. And this piece will still hang down far enough to come through the frame. Now, before we pulled this off, uh, we have about an inch and a half of clearance. I figure for leaf springs, we need about three inches of clearance for it to be able to, you know, go down all the way and hopefully not bottom out. So if we take the top to right there, right here's our bottom. That's an inch and five eighths. So that would give us three and one eighth on clearance. I do believe that'll be enough notch for us. So I'd set this up here and gave us some marks where we know where to cut this one for the other side, uh, but we better do one side first, okay? We're gonna take our pipe. We're gonna take our adjustable square, go over here. Oh, shit. That scared me. I may need to go change my britches. Let's go mark out for this notch. 
A little tracing action. Of course, we're going to square across the bottom. Uh, when I go to square, I like to keep it tight. I'd rather have to grind something out to keep the fit up tight than take out too much. Now this takes a little eagle eye, but where this corner rounds right in the center, I'm gonna mark us a line to intersect. We're gonna uh, measure off the cab mount back to that line. 43 and 5 sixteenths. We'll write that down because we'll use that on the other side to make sure our notch goes in the exact same position. This line intersects the circle at 2 and 3 sixteenths on both sides. So I wrote that there. And as long as we get that matching and that matching, Boom, boom, we got Siamese, no, that ain't Siamese twins. Identical twins, matching twins. Both sides will be the same, all right? Y'all know what I'm trying to say. You can do this with a cutoff wheel. It's a little bit of a pain. Luckily, we got the plasma cutter, so we're gonna take this thing to Plasma City. Uh, but before we start cutting on this, we wanna support the rear of the frame. And for that, we're gonna have to get out the old 12-ton Tammies. Our frame running uphill works good for us because, guys, we don't wanna pick up on this and set the weight on these. We want these just kissing this frame. So when we cut that, if for any reason it wants to droop, it can't. But at the same time, we don't wanna cut that. And when it relieves, it give in and give up. Don't you give up on me. Now this running uphill means we can raise that to there. We can actually shove in the old 12 ton unit till it gets just a little tension. That should be perfect. Give it about one Skechers kick worth. We'll call that GUD, call her good. And that pair, that's where all of our weight's still at. That's what you want. This one's ready for a little cutting. Oh, I like doing a little cutting. I'm the right man for the job. Rule number one to good plasma cutting, you make sure that hat's backwards where it knows you mean business. Put on your uh, three quarter safety glasses and give her hell. Make sure she's in kill mode first. I forgot a step. And that, my friends, is how some of you would say you uh, ruined, ruined it. You yeah, ruined it. You ruined a perfectly good truck. Quick little cleanup with the flapper. Uh, I did have to take off these inside edges just a hair, like I said, cut it small, flap it big. Hey ho, I'm not a picky man, I'll take that. Uh, we need to mark the inside where we know where to trim this down to. I say right there, that should put us out about three eighths of an eight inch past that edge. Yeah, uh, we'll go three and three sixteenths. Make sure those all touch with our tape. Now, usually with the slice and dice, we just follow that edge and cut it. I'm gonna mark her out and uh, use the old plasma cutter again. Call that thing the plasma cheater, because it's like cheating. The cutting's quick anyhow. Uh, I'm not good at cutting, so I'll spend just as much time cleaning that as if I would've just cut it with the slice and dice. I made a clean cut from the start. So I use the slice and dice a lot, but if we never practice, we won't get better. Rounded our corners, nothing crazy, just quick little cleanup. And uh, yeah, we wanna get nice bare metal on there. So when we weld, it's nice and clean. Outside and inside we clean up so it's ready to weld and uh, yeah let's tack, tack that baby in two and a quarter two and a quarter those measurements are reading the same it should be in there the same
Just had to close her down because the wind is too crazy. Uh, I did get our passenger side uh, caught up to the driver's side tacked in. So now I need to weld these babies out. That wind's out there just to getting it. to weld the outside inside that gets it nice and hot and then you can turn your welder down for doing them overhead welds uh, but there's so much preheat in there you can get away with uh you know not having the wet welder set to kill mode gave this time to cool off like a couple hours worth <laughs> me and my wife went and had a valentine's day lunch which turned into me trying to find some u-bolts for this mess which turned into like a four-store trip which is always fun my favorite went to leave and realized i only grabbed one thing of u-bolts you usually need two or a total of four u-bolts so that was smart on my part and then still couldn't even make it here because we had that great sheet metal fiasco of 2023 yeah, our home builder called me and he was like, hey, this uh, sheet metal's just going plumb everywhere. So uh, the, the half hull's going to hold it down for us. Anyhow, if it's okay with life now, uh, I would like to uh, plate up our C-notch. Hmm. Kind of just look at her here. And, yeah, I think we'll plate up a decent portion of it. About 16 inches worth. Yeah, that's only about 15. We'll cut that chunk out, and we should be able to set that down on the inside, and then start doing a little tracing matching. Or matching tracing. And I see I did not give us enough up here. See how that drops? Don't worry about that. We'll just build that edge up with a little blue tape action. I'm gonna mark where I want to stop back here. Of course, we're just gonna trace this unit. And down here, we'll just use our good old marker trick. Shove it on that edge. We'll flip her over and I'm just gonna draw us a radius. Uh, I just do not like how a straight line looks on something like this. Used our marker trick again and uh, yeah, we actually want our plate to not sit flush with this. We want it down where we can fill that corner in with weld. So we actually need to take about an eighth inch off over here too. Of course, y'all can see what I'm doing here. We just gotta get this old piece of ram board here, work down into place till we're real happy with how she's fitting. There she is. I think that right there is the winning ticket. But, you know, it looks better on anything. <laughs> Speed holes. So kind of across there is four and a half. So we'll mark center two and a quarter. Up here across is four inches. So we'll mark center. Just kind of a quick and easy way to get her close. Then we can use our little circle maker here to uh, crosshair that. Yeah, something like that'll work. Wonder what the chances are we get both of them out of this scrap piece. I did check our template on the driver's side and it matches up perfect there, which is good. We know we're uh, matching both sides. Who got you the balloons? Uh huh. Better not be no boy. Dad will whoop an ass. You better let somebody know. Roses are red. Your eyes are fixing to be blue. Next time you get my daughter flowers, you better get me some too. <laughs> Go ahead and mark center of them holes before I forget again.
boom grind these two to match that way we know they match <laughs> look like them damn things that the batman throws at people my damn bat, bat ratarangs next we're gonna drill some holes time for a little hole action we're gonna try some of this mouse milk that someone had sent me we're gonna do another inch and a half or on the back I done pulled up some dimple dies out the old treasure chest here. These pieces got to be asymmetrical, so I made sure to write out, which means uh, this needs to go down into this. Stack them blocks like your toddler, and uh, yeah, we're ready to press. As we press that, you'll see this moves up. On this thicker stuff, uh, it'll dimple it, but it ain't got quite enough booty on it to flatten it back out. So maybe you can see how that's all curved. But what you wanna do is uh, lay that back on a block and flip this one over on the back side. And you can uh, press that and it'll flatten that sucker right back out. Yep. Oh. Gave the old wrist a pop. That's how you know you took it far enough. And once you pull that beauty out, you got your three dimple dyed speed holes. All right, that looks pretty good sat in there. Uh, I'm gonna clean up this edge and then we're gonna tack that in there. Tacky tack tack. got good fit up all the way around uh, you can see where we're gonna lay our weld in there and you don't have to be a pretty weld because we can smooth that out real easy if grinder and paint makes you the welder you ain't grind it and paint it god bless it guys i don't know what keeps taking my gas but something keeps taking my damn gas I've been having issues with this, so I just rebuilt everything on it. Oh, I forgot to turn her back on. <laughs> so I welded these out last night, and then I uh, got out here this morning, hit her with a little flap attack, and yeah, I'm liking how that's looking. With her notched out, ready for the truck to go lower, well, it's time to start working on getting her lower. Here's what we took out, and here's what we plan to put back in. Look at this beefcake supreme of a rear end. Do y'all see all the options on this thing? The many premium options. Right there, what's that? That's the mass flow gear speed sensor. It measures the gear speed, divides it by the airflow, and tells you the ambient temperature of the axle tube itself. Parking brake cables. Y'all know what we do with them. You slice them off there. This engine has compression, AKA a parking brake, okay? If we need to park it, Put that baby in gear, she'll hold. Speaking of brake, I know y'all see them disc brakes. Top of the line stopping power. And if you look across the back, don't have a heart attack. That's just a rear sway bar. I didn't even know we were gonna get with this thing. We may see how it matches up to the, to the back half of this frame, okay? We may have to hook it up, who knows? Keep Mr. Mercer from doing the side to side boogie. That way when he comes around the on-ramp or something, he don't look like Michael Jackson during Thriller when he leans over, you know what I mean? Here comes Mr. Mercer. <laughs> this rear end even has a side-to-side -side kind of stabilizer shocking device. I'm guessing it kind of sat at an angle about like so. If we can hook it up, we may hook it up. Now, <laughs> if you want to hook up, you need posi traction. And this rear end has limited slip and 373 gears, which I think will be fun for a little hot rod shop truck. Pretty beefy rear end that came out of the Ford Explorer. And uh, yeah, if you know what years these came in, drop a comment down below. Maybe that'll help someone out because I'm not sure uh, what years it was all available. One thing I did not do was measure from the mountain surface to the mountain surface for the wheels. But for some reason in my head, I already knew it would work. So I don't know if I read something 
if I did measure and I forgot, but we might want to check that. We'll just measure off our tires actually, so 63 and 5 sixteenths. Well, that's interesting. It's actually about two inches narrower, so an inch each side. We're gonna move forward, okay? Uh, let's tear down what we don't need right now on this rear end, all of our accessories. Big boys right there don't play no games. Tripped her down, and uh, looking at this, guys, we may have really lucked out here. And what I mean is, uh, with this axle saddle being on the bottom, that means our leaf spring goes on the bottom, so this is already like it's flipped. See on this one over here, how our axle saddle that welds to the axles up here on the top? Well, to lower that and flip the axle, you'd have to cut that saddle off and weld one on the bottom so then it could sit on top of the leaf spring. Now in the world where we lower stuff, uh, that's called flipping the axle. Depending on the leaf spring, sometimes good for up to five inches. Well, if you look over here, uh, these axle saddles are already on the bottom of this rear end. We know that one bolted underneath the truck, so we're gonna measure it as best as we can. Center to center is roughly 40 inches. <laughs> Uh, slap my booty and get me some taco boy uh, Best I can tell is 39 and 3 eighths. I'd be moving in 5 16 on each side since we get to build our own uh, leaf spring mounts We should definitely be able to accommodate to that. I think We're gonna start Frankenstein and our suspension together here about these new leaf springs off the internet uh, fairly cheap best I can tell I think our clamp goes forward and then uh, that thread right there that bolt that sticks up we're gonna have to cut that down to be able to mount these I do have the u-bolts and the little hanger plates whatever you call them from the exploder Oh, those all cleaned up good. They're definitely runnable. Cut them threads off because it needs to sit in here, but that nut ain't sitting in there quite right. Perfect. Right at 26, and this side's 26. What I'm showing you is uh, the length of this spring on both sides is pretty equal. So knowing that, we can square off of somewhere over here. We're gonna aim for about 45 and a half. We got 45 and 5 eighths. So we know if we bring that to 45 and 9 sixteenths, that's gonna split the difference. That's pretty square. We need to clamp it right there. Just got her squared up. Now me and Slick, we did go get the taco boy, uh, but I didn't let him smack my hiney. I don't even know what that means. Slap my booty and get me some taco boy. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have him help me flip this and drag it. This little girl, she don't weigh nothing. We can do some workouts here if we want it. I think later when we're old and can't walk, we have to show that clip. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am at the age of 31 doing 10 Mr. Mercers. Yeah. The lack of logistics into this is about to start showing. To the top of the frame right there, it's set it right at six inches. 
We could probably find a different leaf spring, or we could make these work and be able to tow a gooseneck when we wanted. Gooseneck towing option it is. I actually want to get this rear end exactly where I want it and we'll tack it to the frame locking it in place and then we can add the lowering blocks in and then basically wherever that ends up putting our spring mounts at is where we're going to have to build our spring mounts too. We got to get her matching side to side and I done got it matching perfect but we also got to get her matching front to back and we got to look at some pinion angle. Give a love tap. Eh? A little tap. A little tappy, tappy, tappy. Guys, I've been tapping around for about an hour and a half and we still ain't got it where I want it. I'm about tapped out myself. Hallelujah, look at them welds. Just playing. Ah. Uh. Thank goodness we have this thing tacked in, as you see. I got it squared up where I wanted it. Now, a good way to hold the rear end usually is take an old U-bolt, put it up on the bottom side, then you weld this to the frame. But with my notch lip out there and all the junk on this rear end, uh, this wouldn't really work for us. We measured from here to here, making sure both sides are matching for a good side to side. From the cab mount back to our bracket, uh, we had to get that measuring to make sure she's in there square. When adjusted on one, uh, it's real easy to throw off the other. That's why it's a headache. Now, pinion angle, uh, I checked our pinion angle underneath there, and it was at two. I gave us a couple extra degrees here because when we get weight on this, as that pivots forward, uh, that should take a couple of degrees out of there and they should match, in theory. The good thing is if theories don't work, uh, pinion angle shims do, okay? So if we're a little wrong, we can shim it, but I guarantee you it's gonna be pretty damn close. Now take your time if you do something like this, guys. Don't get frustrated and rush it. This is what really counts because if you put it off and you're crab walking across town, someone's gonna see your truck and you're gonna be like, hey man, my truck's awesome. And they're gonna be like, yeah, I've been behind you before and I've seen how it goes crooked down the road and you don't want that. Get it set up right. We're good now so we can remove our uh, clamps. I just use those to kind of hold that. And we're gonna unbolt the U-bolts and get our lowering blocks in. The whole thing just falls. <laughs> that wouldn't even be the first time I've cried on camera. <laughs> I'd just be out here bawling. <laughs> World's largest creeper coming in. Lowering blocks I didn't know I was going to need. Now these I bought yesterday. And come to find out our uh, new U-bolt ain't going to fit that. So we'll drill her out. Survey says. She'll fit now. To fit down over that nut, we need 11 16 hole. As observed from the old cheating circle sheet. So we're gonna trace that there and do some custom machine work. Hoodin's machine shop. <laughs> Custom machine work for the win. We're gonna slap this side together. Now our frame's the same width up here as it is back here. So we know our frame rails are running parallel. So as long as we measure off of here and get that measurement matching that, leaf spring should be square. Now we measured from our cab mounts to the center of here, made sure we're matching on both sides. Springs are square, rear end still square, everything's where it needs to be. Now what does that mean for us? That means if we like that uh, with stuff like this, now we build our leaf spring mounts to this. Now we're gonna try to cheat some here. I bought this uh, kit offline. I don't remember what it's, Slag Factory. Uh, it's for like Toyota swapping. Chevy axles under Toyotas is what I meant to say. Comes with some front mount. 
comes with this thingy majigger that we can weld that to that we can put that bushing in and use that hardware and these shackles and yeah if we can use some of it to make this easy on us we'll use it now that should fit there but it don't wanna and i spy my little eagle eye she's bent a little bit past 90. she'll bend back or she won't trying to figure out where the best place to stand yeah, i'm trying to go away <laughs> Nice weather outside today. <laughs> so as we have a little look-see here, we've got a couple options. What I mean by that is that could go on like that. We could pivot it up. I mean, it could lay down. We could pull that bolt, flop it around. But what I'm kind of thinking is we may trim this here. And you could see how doing something kind of like that right there would work. This is a part where I'll stare at this for an hour and a half and not even make up my mind. I'm forcing my own hand here because I'm serious. I'll stare at this for three hours. Uh, if it, This is a pretty big commitment though because once we cut this, we kind of limit down our options. Quick square job. Hit her with the slice and dice. I'm gonna turn her back now. Our little template here. She is close to four inches wide, maybe a sixteenth wider or so. Got some four inch strap right here. Of course, this is quarter inch thick. We'll try one out of this. If this will work, this will save us a lot of time using this strap. All right, cleaned her up and I laid that right back on our strap since this angle matches, all we gotta do is trace that there and uh, that'll match for our other side. That's handy. There we go, we want a little tension on that where we can adjust it still. My Johnson says that the frame is running at one, two, three degrees. So we'll match this at a three degrees. That don't look too bad right there. <laughs> Take that old hot metal to the butt cheek, you'll pop up quick. Hot potato, hot potato, one, two, three. I like how that looks. It'd definitely be uh, nice and strong. We may have not took enough out right there. Uh, if we end up having to grind that out, we will. I feel like that's gonna hit. I'm gonna pull this off here and weld her up. She's steaming like a demon. And I decided to go ahead and square that open, cut it up, whatever. Get us more clearance there. A lot easier to do with it right here than over there. So this thing is spicy right now. I did weld the vertical welds in there. I definitely should have cleaned up this area before we put all this in our way. Got some good news and some good news. Good news number one, I think we'll be able to weld down in there. Good news number two, that fits up awesome. Uh, I welded that a decent amount front and back. A little more than just a tack because we ain't gonna weld it out yet. After we get the rest of it all mocked up, we wanna kinda test it before we burn in everything 100%. I gotta be pretty on point today, guys. We gotta leave after the kiddos get out of school to head to Tejas for the weekend. We got some family stuff. Now right here, I've got these aluminum bushings and uh, they're for mocking up because you can weld with these. Of course, if you had rubber in there, it'd be a problem. That rubber will catch on fire. Ask me how I know. So these will just go in there and then we'll put this washer. That's for a half inch bolt. 
which is what we're using. So then we can uh, mock up our shackles. Our frame's at two and a half degrees, so we're gonna match this to two and a half degrees. But before you match this, you need to get this where you want it. And I'm not getting too picky here, guys. I eyeballed it about like that, and that's good enough for me. And basically using that eyeball is how I built the whole other side. I just measured the other one in our first plate. Needs to come about right here. That's this plate right here. So I cut this first piece, and once I seen that, like that, I was thinking obviously we need more material. So, well, and you wanna stabilize it too. So then I thought we could do something like that, because then we can full weld around the bottom, making that super strong. And then I thought, well, what the hell, smell? We can uh, bring another one, about like so. Time for attack attack. That didn't sound as good as I thought it would. Tacked all of our brackets up, but none of it's tacked to the frame. So we can weld it over here. Let's weld her up. That thing's hotter than a two balled badger. So we're gonna set it outside, let it cool down. And we'll start working the other side into play, in, into place. Got this one razzle dazzled into place. Uh, checked our angle there, checked our angle there. Everything's good. Weld her in guys, she's good. 73 and a half. 73 and a half. Yeah, guys, that, that matched out good. I matched our angles. Everything with the measuring tape matched. I'm pretty happy with that. So the few decent little welds on each one. Next, we need to cut our scrap metal out and we actually need to get our wheels on and set this thing down on the ground and kind of cycle it. Give her a little testy test. I know you seen her drop down. The sway bar brackets are gonna hit our notch, so we need to lop them off there. So much for rear sway bar. Now I will say one thing I did not know how to account for was how much this spring was gonna sag. Our goal was from the top of the frame to the top of the axle to be five and five eighths. That's the goal at the beginning of the video anyhow. So I didn't think these springs were gonna have much gift to them. Uh, when I locked that rear end in place from the top of the frame to it, I did six inches. So that only allowed for three eighths to sag, which probably wasn't enough. But also we, we got lowering blocks, so we're not too worried about that. We're sitting a little over five inches there so it's actually gonna sit lower than we wanted. Now me personally, I don't think there's such thing as too low. Uh, so the good thing is with them lowering blocks in there, guys, if after this settles some, if it is too low, we can swap that three inch block out for a two inch block, okay? We got adjustability there. Coming down, she's coming down. Oh yeah, that thing's pretty slammed. Hey yo, that's pretty good, guys. I thought it was gonna be a lot stiffer than that, so I'm really surprised. This damn thing is slammed. Now observations here, uh, we may end up having to do something with this cross member because it may end up hitting, maybe not. Ain't nothing binding. Our shackles ain't hitting our mounts or nothing like that. I think everything's good to burn in. All right. Besides welding them out, we gusset them up. Took some eighth inch strap and uh, dimple dyed it, the same as our inch and a half on the boxing plates over there. This one kind of looks silly because you can see that underneath there, but who cares? There's holes underneath all of that so it can drain out. So if you're worried about that, don't be. I don't know if this thing's a hole or what, because I'm digging it. She's full welded out now, so now we can really give her the old oomph testing. <laughs> 
I really bounce on it, or it's not just hitting this bracket still, but if that was all shaved off there, it wouldn't. And also having some shocks to dampen that uh, is gonna make a big difference too. So let's look at shocks. Now that we're done looking at them, uh, let's see about getting them on the truck. Did a little pondering back here and uh, I think I got us a solution for some uh, shock mounts. That goes there. But as we come up here, then of course we gotta compress that some and the angle this has to be at, that's kind of sort of tricky, or it looks tricky at first anyhow. I took our old angle finder, and I slapped that there, and I adjusted this side over here. You see how it goes straight across the frame maybe? Huh, can you see it? So I think we can cut some plate that will slide over this, comes out, break it at that angle, and hopefully we can mount this tab, or a stud that comes with this, in that bracket. AKA build something like this. Uh-huh. Tricked y'all. I said it might work, but I already done the other side. So y'all seen how I held, held that there? I just kind of did a rough measurement and I come up with uh, four and three quarters. So that's what we need to cut our strap. Now for our strap, I figured about an inch and a half on top and an inch and a half on bottom. So we need three inches. Luckily for us, I keep that three inch strap too. Quarter inch thick. Oh, got her doing the old snipe ton. Next, we need a, a marker square across, three and a half inches. This is where we're gonna uh, break this at. Better check her. Need a little more. Bingo, that's perfect. Uh, I know I made it an inch and a half wide, so I centered it up at three quarter, and I think I came back about an inch. And on this bottom side, I went over about two and five eighths. We gotta get rid of that chunk right there because the body of the shock will hit that if we don't. Now besides that, we're gonna round this top corner. You gotta hold a drill, cut it, round a couple corners, and you got a top notch shock bracket. Let's go see how she uh, slides on. She should go something like that right there. That sticks up about the same amount as that does. So hopefully we'll get lucky and there won't be a brace right there on our bed floor, but maybe there is, who knows? We may have to cut the floor for this anyhow. We don't wanna cut the bed floor. So we don't wanna cut the floor for a bigger notch, but we'll cut the floor for a shackle and a shock mount. That makes sense. I'm gonna clean that up, cause if this looks good, uh, yeah, she's gonna get welded on. Now I had to compress that to get it on there and your shock needs to have some left in it so as this travels up, it don't uh, limit it. On the flip side, you've gotta have enough so as it travels down, you don't bottom out your shock. I like that right there. I wish I had my welder in my hand. 55 and 5 sixteenths. Oh, ho. Guess who's not so bouncy bouncy anymore? Uh, I just found them shocks and I knew I could get them today. They feel a little stiff if I'm being honest, but that's okay. We know the springs are about where they need to be. Yeah, so if we gotta swap those out, you know, we'll swap them out. Who knows though, we might get this thing on the road and she may just float down the old highway like a Cadillac. Just feels a little stiff with these babies. The last thing we need to do is uh, brace this up somehow though. Well, who remembers this little piece we cut out of there, huh? We could clean her up with a flap attack and make her pretty, and then set that, I don't know, say something like that. Keep that thing from being able to fold back. Now that we know we ain't gonna use them shock mounts, they're no longer welcome here. There they are. 
And I got these little cuties cleaned up. I think for now, guys, we're gonna call this D-U-N. We'll call her done. Look at that old 8.8, .8 looking great. Guys, it worked out. Uh, it ain't 100%. I wish I had another day to stay plucking away at it, but I do not. In fact, I still gotta go by the post office to drop off y'all's merch available at puttinfabshop.com. And uh, yeah, I'm supposed to be packed to go to Texas already. I'm running behind, that's what I'm saying. But we still need to clean this up. We'll go ahead and pull this bracket off. But we'll take this as a victory. That back is sitting low. I don't think the camera's doing her justice. She's sitting low and ready to tow. 59 International Frankenstein suspension complete. I hope y'all enjoyed watching. Maybe you got you an idea too uh, that can help you. Main thing you need to know is mama didn't raise no punk, so don't be scared and be willing to <laughs> fire from the hip and you'll be okay. You two can fabric cobble some suspension together. I'm on the Instagrammer, I'm on the Patreon. Uh, do not forget though, sitting on your ass won't finish your project. Hey, this is Dave Chappelle. I didn't answer my phone. Damn you dirt head, Dave. Uh, shackle angles knowing you like the lower trucks and your leaf spring experience with your off-road stuff but basically i just set it wherever i wanted it and it's burned in so it really don't matter now <laughs> yeah no it, it, it it'll work or it won't at this point it'll work just fine yeah it, it'll do its job no matter what